Amphiprotic anions are negative ions that can undergo both acid and base hydrolysis. Here we'll look at some of these ions and show you how to find which hydrolysis will predominate for a particular ion. It is important to be able to recognize amphiprotic anions. Here's how we do it. Firstly, the formulas for amphiprotic anions always start with H. It may be just 1H or H2. The second thing is, amphiprotic anions always have a negative charge. It could be just negative 1 or negative 2. You will find amphiprotic anions on both sides of the acid table. This is because they can undergo both acid hydrolysis and base hydrolysis. The name for an amphiprotic anion is found using the one on the left side of the table. For example, this ion is called the hydrogen oxalate ion. The names of amphiprotic anions start with the word hydrogen or dihydrogen, as in dihydrogen citrate, H2C6H5O7. Notice HSO3- is called the hydrogen sulfite ion. HSO3- is also found on the ion table. It can be called either hydrogen sulfite, like it is called on the acid table, or it can also be called bisulfite. These other amphiprotic anions found on the ion table can also be found on both sides of the acid table. You will find it easier to locate them as you use them more and get familiar with them. Now that we know how to identify ions as amphiprotic, let's take a closer look at how these can undergo both acid and base hydrolysis. We'll use the dihydrogen phosphate ion, H2PO4- as an example. Because it's on the left side of the acid table, we know it can undergo acid hydrolysis. When H2PO4- undergoes acid hydrolysis, it plays the role of an acid and water plays the role of a base. So a proton is transferred from the H2P4- to the water molecule. When the water gains a proton, it forms its conjugate acid, a hydronium ion, H3O+. And when H2PO4- loses a proton, it forms its conjugate base, HPO4-2-. So this is the equation for the acid hydrolysis of the dihydrogen phosphate ion, H2PO4-. Looking on the acid table, we see that H2PO4- is also on the right side. This means it can also undergo base hydrolysis. When H2PO4- undergoes base hydrolysis, it plays the role of a base. And water plays the role of an acid. So a proton is transferred from a water molecule to the H2PO4- ion. When a water molecule loses a proton, it forms its conjugate base, a hydroxide ion, OH-. And when H2PO4- gains a proton, it forms its conjugate acid, H3PO4, phosphoric acid. So this is the equation for the base hydrolysis of H2PO4-. In order to find out whether an amphiprotic anion makes a solution acidic or basic, we have to determine which is predominant, acid hydrolysis or base hydrolysis. So we have the acid hydrolysis of dihydrogen phosphate, which produces hydronium ions in solution. And we have the base hydrolysis of dihydrogen phosphate, which produces hydroxide ions in solution. Both of these reactions take place when dihydrogen phosphate is in solution. Remember that if the hydronium ion concentration in a solution is greater than the hydroxide ion concentration, then the solution is acidic. If the hydroxide ion concentration in a solution is greater than the hydronium ion concentration, then the solution is basic. And if the hydroxide ion concentration is equal to the hydronium ion concentration, then the solution is neutral. 
So if the acid hydrolysis of an amphiprotic anion occurs to a greater extent, or is predominant over the base hydrolysis, more hydronium is formed than hydroxide. And the solution will be acidic. If the base hydrolysis of an amphiprotic anion is predominant, then more hydroxide is formed than hydronium, and the solution will be basic. The extent of acid hydrolysis is determined by the value of Ka for the dihydrogen phosphate. The Ka expression is shown here. The concentration of hydronium is in the numerator, so the greater the Ka value, the more hydronium ion there is. The extent of base hydrolysis is determined by the value of Kb for the dihydrogen phosphate ion. The Kb expression is shown here. The concentration of hydroxide is in the numerator, so the greater the Kb value, the more hydroxide ion there is. We can summarize by saying if the Ka for an amphiprotic anion is greater than the Kb, for the same ion, then acid hydrolysis will predominate. And the concentration of H3O plus will be greater than the concentration of OH minus. Now if Kb for an amphiprotic anion is greater than the Ka for the same ion, then base hydrolysis will predominate. And the concentration of OH minus will be greater than the concentration of H3O plus. It is important to remember these two statements. If Ka is larger than Kb, then acid hydrolysis predominates. And if Kb is larger than Ka, then base hydrolysis predominates. The value of Ka for dihydrogen phosphate is found by looking it up on the left side of the table, then reading its value directly from the right side of the row. We'll make a note of it up here. In order to find the value of Kb for the H2PO4- ion, we must locate H2PO4- up here on the right side of the table. To find Kb, we must treat this ion as a base, so we look for it on the right side. So we want to find the value of Kb for the H2PO4- ion. The conjugate acid of H2PO4- is H3PO4, phosphoric acid. So the Ka of the conjugate acid of H2PO4- is 7.5 times 10 to the negative 3, the Ka for H3PO4. Remember the formula for the Kb of a species such as H2PO4- is Kb equals Kw divided by the Ka of the conjugate acid, which is Kw divided by the Ka of H3PO4, phosphoric acid. Kw is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, and the Ka of the conjugate acid, H3PO4, is 7.5 times 10 to the negative 3. So the value for Kb is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 7.5 times 10 to the negative 3, which comes out to 1.3 times 10 to the negative 12. So we'll make a note of that up here. We had said that if Ka of H2PO4- minus is greater than its Kb, then acid hydrolysis predominates. And if Kb of H2PO4- is greater than its Ka, then base hydrolysis predominates. 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8th is greater than 1.3 times 10 to the negative 12th. So the Ka of H2PO4- minus is larger than its Kb. Therefore, acid hydrolysis predominates. And the equation for the acid hydrolysis of H2PO4- minus is H2PO4- minus plus water gives H3O plus 
plus HPO4 2 minus. Because acid hydrolysis predominates, we can say the equation for the predominant hydrolysis of H2PO4 minus is this equation. H2PO4 minus acting as an acid in its reaction with water and forming a hydronium ion. To review, an amphiprotic anion such as dihydrogen phosphate can act both as an acid and as a base undergoing both acid hydrolysis to form a hydronium ion and base hydrolysis to form a hydroxide ion. The extent of acid hydrolysis is reflected by the value of its Ka. And the extent of base hydrolysis is reflected by the value of its Kb. Once we know the values of Ka and Kb for an amphiprotic anion, we compare them. If Ka for the ion is larger than Kb, then acid hydrolysis will predominate, and more hydronium will be produced than hydroxide. And if the Kb for the ion is larger than Ka, then base hydrolysis will predominate, forming more hydroxide than hydronium. In the example we used, H2PO4 minus, its Ka value is 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8, which is larger than its Kb value of 1.3 times 10 to the negative 12. So acid hydrolysis predominates. And the equation for the predominant hydrolysis of dihydrogen phosphate is H2PO4 minus plus water gives H3O plus plus HPO4 2 minus.